Amen, 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 amen. You don't have to say amen, I say this for you. What day is this? Is this the day that the Lord has made? What are we going to do about it? We're going to rejoice and be glad. I felt the buzz in this place this morning. I felt your energy. I felt your joy. I felt your enthusiasm. I felt that this morning. And I trust that you felt it from each one of us. That as we greeted each other, as we uh, blessed each other, that there was the witness of God's Spirit within each one of us. The preparation for death. That's a really tough subject because that's a subject that none of us want to deal with. But we must deal with it. I'm going to uh, not read the Scripture text. I'll just let you know the Scripture text is found in John chapter 12, verses 1 through 11, and they're on your bulletin. Uh, I'm going to skip that as a result of uh, our time. Last week we talked about the importance of hearing and focusing on Jesus. Last week the disciples had witnessed the transfiguration and somebody came over with the idea, I think it was Peter. He says, well, it's good that we're here. Let's build Three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And God spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased with. Hear him. And we pick up our story this morning in regards to Jesus had gone to the house of Lazarus to share supper with him, Mary, Martha, and friends. Everything was going well. Everything was really set. All of a sudden, Mary would have in my opinion, in my human opinion, had a bean dream. She had this very expensive perfume that typically they save for their burial. And she poured the perfume on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the disturbance came. Judah said, Hey, 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 hey! This is an expensive perfume. Why don't we give the perfume value to the poor? And we know that he was not interested in giving anything to the poor because he was a thief. He managed the purse and was responsible for the distribution of the funds. So he came up with the idea and he wanted to have Jesus to scold her for doing that, for wasting. And Jesus said, Leave her alone. Leave her alone. This is in regards to my death. The person without spiritual discernment, this act made no sense whatsoever. There will be times 
in your life as a Christian that the prompting of the Holy Spirit will prompt you to do something that other people look at and why is he doing that? What is wrong with him? And I'm sure there perhaps were other disciples that did not vocalize what they were thinking. But Judas did. Sometimes we will operate out of the box, out of the norm, because God is wanting to do or say something to somebody. The Word of God tells us that the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2.14 There is no way in our human wisdom and understanding that we're going to be able to comprehend spiritual things from God without His Spirit residing within us. The natural man may be defined as an individual who operates entirely on human wisdom. We've seen a lot of natural men and women Amen. This is due to the fact that they have not made a commitment to Jesus Christ. And you know what the problem is? We are expecting them to understand spiritual things when they cannot when they do not have the spirit of conviction in their lives. But we can expect that from one another. He, the unbeliever, the natural man, has not experienced the new birth and has not allowed the Holy Spirit to lead him and to guide him into all truth. That is the work of the Holy Spirit, to lead us and to guide us into all truth. But he doesn't understand the truth. His mind is blinded from the truth. He does not welcome the truth, the spiritual truth, that comes from God. It is all foolishness. It's all foolishness to him. Before a person becomes a Christian, Scripture calls him the natural man. He has no ability to worship or serve God in his natural state. You cannot expect people who are in their flesh, who are void of the Holy Spirit, to praise God, to worship God, to thank God. The Bible says they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. There cannot be any worship if we do not have the Spirit of God and the truth abiding within us. But we can expect that from the believers to worship God in spirit and in truth. We can expect the people of God to be excited about what Jesus Christ has done for them individually and collectively, we can expect them to be excited about what God has done in their lives. We can't expect that from people who have not experienced the power and presence of Jesus Christ. 
What say you? So it is not foreign to us. It is not foreign to us to hear one another say, Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord, sister. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We can expect that. We can expect that Jesus has done something noteworthy in your lives for you to ascribe to him praise and honor and glory and the preeminence of your lives. And you give him all the praise. We expect that. It becomes second nature. It is not foreign. It is not, well, why are they saying that? See, the natural man, when you praise the Lord, as a result of something that has happened in your life that is not viewed as a good thing and you say praise the Lord, they think you have lost your mind. <laughs> Why is he saying that? Why is he praising the Lord? I wouldn't be saying that. I would be cursing and swearing. Not so with us. We have a kingdom abiding within us. A kingdom that is not of this world. And we've got to prepare ourselves to dwell in that kingdom. Judas Iscariot did not understand the spiritual meaning of Mary's sacrificial uh, act in pouring the oil on Jesus' feet before his death. You see, they had no inclination that a few days forthcoming, Jesus would commit his life for us, that he would lay down his life for us, that he would die for us. They thought that that was somewhere in the distant future. But six days later, Jesus was having communion with his disciples. And that night, betrayed by Judas. You see, that oil was reserved. In the old world, they reserved the oils, the fragrant oils and spices for a person's burial. I've worked in the funeral home. And I know how dead bodies smell. Hello. And they did not have the ability that we have today to aspirate the body and take the smell out of the body that was dead. Oh, man, this is a deadly message here. Jesus made preparation for his death. Leave her alone, Jesus said. There was little thought that the disciples had of what was to happen. Death is something that we don't even want to think about. When death is mentioned, people clam up and shut down like Fort Knox. When you talk about death to someone, I, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Why? We're going to die. If the Lord doesn't come before we die, we're going to die. It's a fact of life. But guess what? We die to live again. And we have this hope within us of a life beyond the grave. And we can rejoice in the fact that we, are no, we know where we are headed. Hallelujah. 
Some get there before us, but all will get there as the Lord tarries. And we want to make sure that you have settled it in your heart. Our Lord Jesus thought much and spoke of his own death and resurrection. It would be good for us to do likewise. We know that that day is coming. But guess what? The grave can't hold us. <laughs> Hallelujah! The grave cannot hold us because we're going to get up. The Lord is going to raise us up from our deathbeds. And we're going to be with him because Jesus knew that he possessed the power and the authority to raise himself up from the grave. It's no small thing for him to do that for us. Scripture teaches us in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27, just as people are destined to die once and after that to face judgment, so Christ was crucified once to take away the sins of many and he will appear a second time not to bear sin but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Are you waiting for him? Are you waiting for him? Well, there is preparation in waiting for him. Hallelujah. I'm reminding, uh, reminded of a story uh, of, a, of a brother and a wife. They were planning this, this great trip, and uh, they were excited about this great trip that, that they were planning. And uh, the day came up, and they were going out of the country, they couldn't find their passports. Do you have your passport? I'm not talking about that old passport. <laughs> I'm talking about the true passport. You got it? We're on our way. And I'm excited about it. Hallelujah. Well, you, you probably are saying, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. You don't have this, this that I have. And, and you look mighty healthy and doesn't look like you have any problems. It doesn't matter how we look. Looks are deceiving. But we know that we live in the land of the dying. Hello. The Holy Spirit enables us to rejoice in our afflictions. Because we know that it wasn't enough for Jesus to suffer. But we who are righteous... We who have been justified by our faith in Jesus Christ, we are going to suffer some things. Hello. It's a part of life. Whenever you and I experience the, the Lord that brings a strong testimony and people are drawn away from darkness, we become the enemy's target. You hear me? He will do whatever it takes to silence us. All the good things that happen in our lives, marriage, children, grandchildren, new homes, dream jobs, etc., we freely share with others. But those are pale in comparison to what Jesus has done for you and I. There's no greater story, there's no greater joy than what the Lord has done and continues to do for us. We should be bold in our proclamation of the Lord and what He has done. 
We should be bold. Hello, we should be bold in regards to what he's done. Well, most of the reasons we do not share is because of fear and personal embarrassment. You know what I find? I find the P word very active and alive. And that P word is pride. We're prideful. Luke chapter 9, verse 26 says, If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. Have you prepared for your departure? We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. We don't want to get to that final hour wondering where we're going, wondering if we've done enough to earn our way into heaven. You can never do enough, never, ever do enough to earn your way into heaven. It's because of the blood of Jesus Christ. It's because of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. While you are alive and have the use of your being, share your testimony. You see, I, I, I marvel over the fact that sometimes, you know, you get into a, a crowd of people who, who are believers and you ask them the question, Man, and this is a, probably a gut-wrenching question for some. Uh, what has the Lord done for you? Uh, man. What has the Lord done for you lately? Mm, uh, I wish he'd call on somebody else. <laughs> It should flow from your being. It shouldn't be something that you struggle with. It should be something that bubbles out of your lives. What he's done. What he's done for you. What he's done for me. People need to hear what the Lord has done for you. Their very lives hang in the balance because of it. You are the witness in the earth that Jesus Christ is alive. Hello, somebody. You are the witness. And if the witness does not witness, then there is no witness. The Holy Spirit empowers us to witness. The Holy Spirit empowers us to suffer persecution. The Holy Spirit empowers us to suffer affliction. The Holy Spirit empowers us to stand firm in our belief and not sway. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that keeps us in perfect peace. When all the world around us is running amok, it is the presence of the Holy Spirit that keeps us at peace, Mother. It is the Spirit of God that gives us peace. He says, peace I give you, not as the world, Stop thinking and looking for peace in the world, my brothers and sisters. The only true peace is the peace that comes from God. And I trust if you don't know that peace, that you will experience and know that peace today as you ask and invite the Lord Jesus Christ into your hearts 
and into your lives. This is no time to play with salvation. This is no time to delay. Well, not today, but today is the day. When I first came here, I met two members, and I loved on them, greeted them. And the reality is the next week they had gone to be with the Lord. The Lord did not reveal that to me. But make sure that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know that Jesus abides within you because you've invited him to have residence in your hearts. Father God, I am so grateful for this body of believers today, God, and those who struggle in their belief. Lord, I pray that the Spirit of the living God would fall afresh in their lives. Father, I thank you for giving us life and more abundant. Father, I thank you for the Word of God. I thank you, Lord, that we can come to know you in the pardoning of our sins, that we can be justified by our faith in you, that we can believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the fact that he's coming back. Father, we pray that you'd prepare us as you prepared yourself to take our place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.